Anyway, next one will be we're on Sky Ring, which is nice. It is Lulnax as Varish with Skybrush as Sirius against Zyda and White Widow. Zyda as Ashkin, White Widow as Older. We saw Zyda in another match. So curious to see how they play here. Probably like most Ashkas, deal damage. Do a bit of control. Mostly just deal damage. Nothing super special. Actually, was Zyda? No, I don't think Zyda was in the tournament I commentated a few weeks ago. Anyway, round one begins. I went around Skyring too, which I kind of, well, day Skyring. Super important center control. That's what you want to do. Get in the center and just hold it. And actually, that being said, no one really gets any wall dependent things. No Freyas or Bacos. Anyway, starting up, blue team. Ooh, wow. Zyda being hyper aggressive and not in a good position either. Good, okay, good shifting stands to get out of the way of the Lunar Strike. But even then, Zyda is getting a lot of damage and is not really dealing much damage in, in return, really. It's just not helping. Red team managing to get the center orb, and good ultimate coming out there, too. Double ultimate, not really sure what White Widow's plan was there. Another good shifting sands. Still using that up, but there's not a lot of follow-up coming in when they don't have an... Well, okay. The shadow came in. That was kind of nice. The shadow was good to see. Actually, that was really good. That dealt a remarkable amount of damage. And good silence, too. Looks like there is Skybridge Ultimate coming in to finish it off. And White Widow also going to be able to just die. Not much else, really. Trying. Going for the ultimate, probably. Okay, stunning out. Lolanax. And expecting an attack. I mean, it's... No, they're at grade 12. They probably are aware that people will probably know, hey, I, you're doing a time bender. I'm not going to attack that or any kind of counter. Generally speaking, people don't attack obvious counters past, like, grade 9 or 10. Below that point, yeah, happens all the time. Above that point, not really. Players generally pay attention to that sort of thing and know not to do it. Gotta say, though, I'm a little bit surprised at this. The Chrono Shift battle, right? Just because Shifting Sands... Yeah, okay. Shifting Sands, putting in a Chrono Flux, that's nice. What projectiles are there? Lulnax, okay, they throw with a few hands from time to time. Skybrush? They got an EX move. That's about it. There's no other projectiles. So it's not terrible, it's just, I don't know, I, I don't, I kind of would have gone with a root myself in this situation. I mean, it's also not great. I don't really know what, there's not a good choice here. Anyway, White Widow, oh, Skybrush being nicely focused down, taken out of the center, desperately trying to heal themselves, and actually doing a pretty good job of it too, not taking a whole lot of permanent damage. And getting healed up, I think, man, the stupid steals. The effect to do is being more obvious. Because right, the problem is when you're observing, it's red at all times. It's not like when you're playing, it's blue and your team and red in the opponent. When you're in the spectator mode, it isn't. It's just red. Or it seems to be just red. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Red team, I'm pretty sure, is the one that did actually get it. And blue team taking a lot of... Skybrush take alone taking a lot of damage. That is basically going to do it, man. Needing to get out of there. If Skyber starts throwing out a few... No, they're going to go for the... No, Astral Beam is not the way to go. If they throw out some Charge Crest... Or some EX Crescent Strikes, that would have been ideal. Or at least the best they could do. Given the situation... And now they're dead. Lonax, on the other hand... Understandable, waiting for their ultimate. Does not manage to get it. So, so much for that. Not the best match. For blue team. For red team, it was great. They did awesome. Good job, red team. Focus them down. And at this point... Hmm. Okay, Lil Nice going for Wuju Judgment. I mean, what will probably end up happening, because it's going to go to round four, Lil Nice is going to take the the combined powers battle right, get the Corruption and Silence to build up each other. Sorry, not corruption sounds corruption and judgment to build up each other, which is always what you want. And then when that's done, it's just gonna be just do it. They'll probably win. That's the one thing about Varish. Once it gets to round four, Varish gets a lot scarier thanks to that right. So much scarier. At this point, Wuju Judgment is also kind of scary. Just for how slow a hand of judgment is. 
So, what we're going for is standard of time area effect, which makes sense. And conflagration, yeah, firewall. For the amount of time Zyda is using firewall, it's actually pretty handy. Zyda has to be using firewall a decent amount of the time, I think. I'm trying to, I'm just trying to blur together now, actually. <laughs> and, ooh, a lot of damage. That firestorm did a nice, that had a number against Lolnax there. Lolnax desperately trying to get out of there. Judgment has been placed on them, and, well, okay, some silencing going on. Still, a lot of damage being dealt. I mean, Older's taking a lot of the corruption, but Older doesn't deal a huge amount of damage. And nice shifting stance to avoid the ultimate. Another ultimate coming out. Looks like Astral Beam will basically do nothing. Good weaken coming out, but at this point, Zyda's taking no real damage. I mean, White Widow's taking loads of damage. Zyda's hardly taking any. And that ultimate coming out. Completely wasted from Zyda. Good counters, by the way. And a lot of healing, just barely staying alive. I mean, Skybrush, they've been below 40 health for most of this match, and they've been surviving. Which is quite impressive. Now it's 2v1. I mean, Zyda's in a good position to kill. Nice dodge. Nice Celestial Split. That's exactly what they needed to do. Could EX to get that center orb, too. Just steal it away. In a 1v2 situation, the center orb is so precious because of that extra health, the 20 health and 50 energy. And denying that to the single player, that is extremely handy. And that, there we go. Win the match. Nice little combo there on blue team's part. But yeah, in general, if they had 20 extra health, if Zyda had 20 extra health, that wouldn't have worked. So, round four, and when Varish gets scary. Yeah, that's really about it. Zyda might go for the Ignite, the Ignite speed drop. Might just go for something else. The Ignite speed drop's okay. No, they're gonna go for Inspiration, that makes more sense. Hey, Seal's Fate's a good one to choose for White Widow. Going for the reduced healing. I mean, given that Lolnax and Skybrush are both healing right now, thanks to Lolnax's battle right choice in round two, that's actually handy. That's really handy. On the other hand, Skybrush hasn't been healing all- I mean, they've been healing somewhat. Yeah, they've been healing, kind of throughout. They've been healing. So it's definitely useful. And decent combo coming in there, but not a whole lot of- Zyda, on the other hand, taking a huge amount of damage. Loads of damage. She's coming in there one- Like, one move after another from the blue team. And Zyda should be- Oh, no, never mind. Going for the ultimate. Pre just about tearing apart Lolnax there. I gotta go back and double check that. Like- Let's just see what happened again. Zyda taking all that damage to Lolnax. He's getting hit with Sands of Times here and there. And yeah, the ultimate finally dealing most of the damage. Forcing Lolnax out of the fight, dropping them by like 60 health. I'm a bit surprised that- Oh, there's the shield. Thinking, why are there not inhibitors guarding themselves? Because that was on it was on cooldown. That's why. That's the only really good reason why. And one good Sands of Time would do the trick. And it looks like... Ooh, just got healed. Center Orb saves the day. Blue team just managing to take that. And... Ooh, White Widow avoiding that death blow. Getting frozen, though. It looks like this is going to be just getting rid of Zyda. Forgetting entirely about White Widow. Get rid of Zyda. Then get rid of White Widow, or try. Good time bender there from White Widow. On Pure Fire, too. That's... That's nice. That's you want that because you want the healing. Yeah, once again, using the EX base or EX searing flight, that's That's how you get that pure fire and super handy. So stunning out Lolnax, which isn't really enough. There's not a whole lot of fire the follow-up that can be done. And unfortunately, that double wooju getting a kill. Double wooju battle right. Kill somebody. Anyone who says anything against it. They're still probably getting having a good point. I mean, it's yeah, double wooju is kind of a hard one to pull off. But in that one case, there is a slight counterexample to that argument that double wooju is useless, because that's generally kind of the attitude towards double wooju. It's like, why did you go for double wooju? What kind of silly move was that? I mean, seriously, have you never played Varish before? That actually came up during the tournament. The the guys over there, the ones I was doing for, for the, where the gamers go. It came up in chat, actually. People were going, why is Varish going for double wuju? And people pointed out, well, because double wuju is actually useful in this matchup.
All right. Well, I'm going to end this off with oh God, gonna be end this off with the next one. And it will be Okay. All right. Skybrush and Pazuzu versus Demo Style and Jinir. Jinir playing Rook, Pazuzu playing Jade, and Demo Style, of course, playing Ashka. Skybrush still is serious. All right, so nothing out of the ordinary. Pazuzu going for the shield, the stealth of material. One more day of that. If you want stealth of material, you have until tomorrow afternoon. I have like 12 hours left to actually play around with that. But anyway, as we see, it is coming in handy and a nice enough coming in here. I gotta say though, shit, snipe, stealth, snipe is gonna be so awesome that, like, I don't know why people are complaining about the loss of the material. Okay, I kinda know why, because lack of a free escape. Like, meter to material is super powerful. But still, on a ranged character too. For Shifu, it's strong, but for, for Jade? Holy shit. Anyway, that's beside the point. The point is, Red Team is actually doing a lot of damage despite all that. Bit of weird aim there too. Not sure why Kazuzu didn't just cancel that. If they were worried about getting hit. A nice, very nice astral beam. Worked out for Skybrush there. The amount of health that that was there for Dembo style was not much. Kazuzu unfortunately not managing to hit. Should have skipped the eye patch today, but blue team does manage to take the center orb. And that's good. Ooh, wow, nicely done, Janir. Nice positioning. Get behind that wall to avoid the ultimate. So I don't think there was much. I mean, not really that there's much that exists for counters. I mean, what does Rook have? They have their counter. Sorry, counters. Invulnerability. They have their counter. They have their ultimate. They will have their smash. Or not smash. Their. Why can't I remember the name of their M2 offhand? Pass the trials. Anyway. They will have that, which is good. Nice. That's very nice. Crushing Blow. That's what it's called. Why? I can't remember that. Anyway. Yeah. Crushing Blow will have iframes on it, which would avoid... I mean, it wouldn't avoid that, the ultimate, so the wall was the best option. Because these walls are made of some lead titanium alloy, and there's never break. And, ooh, I hear... Oh, smack to eat. People don't often go for that. I don't see Rook players usually do that. Everything else, all the other rights are pretty typical, but that's an unusual one. Anyway, counter coming in as Pazuzu decides to shoot the walls to test their integrity, and indeed, they are indestructible. Just confirmed. The walls do not go down. That must make remodeling an absolute hellish experience, but that's irrelevant right now as we have a fight going on, and Skybrush with their weapon charge. Ooh, waste the weapon charge, unfortunately. Not quite, I mean, not so much wasted. Demo style just jumped at the right time. And the snipe hits. There we go. And a nice ultimate, too. And with that counter on cooldown, there was no way to avoid that for Janeer. And at this point, they do manage to get their counter off, but a good snipe will finish. Ooh, not quite. Got the green orbs, got the healing. That's exactly what we needed to do. And Skybrush taking a lot of damage from Dembo Style. Going to help out deal with Janeer, but Dembo Style and Janeer taking the center orb. And an astral beam to finish this off. Getting rid of Janeer. Dembo Style avoiding that expertly, but. Despite that, Explosive Shells finishes them off. So that's 2-0 at this point for Blue Team. Red Team might still be able to get on the board, but this one, Blue Team, ahead quite a lot. Not only that, it's just that stylistically, it just seems like Blue Team's just having an easier time. Especially with that, those snipes hitting. In the first round, the snipes didn't really hit so much. It was a bit harder. Second round, that just... That just repped everything apart. So, Pazuzu going for more common Blast Volts. I mean, Blast Volts... Yeah, right, the round two battle right choice has always been kind of tricky for Jade. And it looks like just healing and armor break damage reduction. I haven't seen a lot of crushing blows and armor break in this one. The armor break rock wasn't the choice. It was smack triggers eat, so there's not a whole lot of armor break going on. And Skybrush taking a lot... I mean, that's the thing. There's going to be a lot of focus on Skybrush because, of course... Healer. And a lot of focus right now. Dembo style really started that, but Janier took it and Red Team taking that orb. Getting rid of 
Sky Brush. Very expertly. Pazuzu not managing to hit that snipe. Although at this point, what they really almost need to do is some snapshots to get them out of the way. Oh, nice. I was going to say nice use of explosive shells, but much nicer use of firewall. And very nice stun there, too. Very nice snipe to stun. Stop that berserk. But unfortunately, red team gets the center orb again. And like I said last time, it's super important to avoid that. And good guess coming in from Janier. Or rather, no juking coming in from Pazuzu. I guess they assumed that Janier assumed that they would juke, and then Pazuzu just kept along a straight path. And either that, no, no, Pazuzu, what they wanted to do, most likely, was get behind the wall for cover. The problem was the timing of it meant that they couldn't get behind it. They could have gotten further away, but they couldn't get behind it. So that was a bit of a problem. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what they wanted to do. Get behind the wall, work from there. Anyhow, round four, and... This point... Ooh, nice material. Nice stealth. I mean, like I said, last time we'll see that happen, but hey. That worked out, avoiding the boulder toss. And Luna Strike getting avoided as well. Just, it was on the edge for Tembo style. And once again, Skyward's getting focused hard. Getting incapacitated as well, but honestly, it's double 1v1. And as long as Skybridge can avoid Jane near, Pazuzu is doing a decent amount of damage to Dembo Styles, so Dembo Styles is not really helping here all that much in this. Although at this point, Red Team is still slightly ahead. Dembo Style is taking a lot more damage than I expected, not managing to deal a whole lot of damage because that Sunrise came up just the right time. And Explosive Shell is almost getting rid. There we go. Explosive Shell is almost getting rid of Dembo Style. Charged Celestial Strike, finishing off Dembo Style. Nice try with the Meatball on the Center Warp, by the way, but that was pretty much impossible. You're against Jade. You're not taking the Center Warp. Not ever. And Astral Beam coming in, which... That was a good snack, by the way. At this point, I could see Janior taking this. Nice Meatball coming in. Avoid the Luna Strike. Good shot there. Get behind the wall for this. Oh! Oh! That is painful! I mean, that is a tough thing to figure out, but getting out of the way there, they wanted to get behind that cover. That was a really good, like, that was a good move. That was a good choice. They just weren't quite as behind cover as they expected. And it's back to town. Oh, do they not have... Oh, right, that's Rush. They don't have any jump attack. What am I thinking? Yeah, Rush is just straightforward. So there's not really any way to avoid that Astral Beam, and that's pretty much what did them in. The amount of damage they took was big enough that they... Couldn't get out of that easily. Because if they had any way of getting over that attack, or just avoiding it entirely, which they don't really... But yeah, if they did, then it's just jump, slam. Like, if that was a Baco, for instance, it would be just valiant leap, slam, done, dead. That'd have settled it, but no. It was just, what do you have? You have Rush? That's about it. Like, that's not gonna help you. Anyway, that's that. So that's it for me tonight. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And really looking forward to the next patch. Which does mean I'm going to need replays from that patch because of the compatibility thing. But whatever. I'm super excited anyway. So it should be great. Anyway, that's tomorrow. But for now, good night everybody. Thanks for watching.